the Oklahoma Sooners are getting ready for the salary cap era. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. Free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube, so hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I'm John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. My man here is Jay Smith. You can follow him on Twitter at Unfair Sports. And the Oklahoma Sooners are being proactive. As only Joe Castiglione knows how to do. He only thinks three, four steps ahead. And they are getting ready for what looks like the salary cap era of college football to be upon us by connecting with NFL executives to start figuring out how this is all going to work at the collegiate level. Yeah, I like that there's proactivity here. Oklahoma recognizes that there's a change in the landscape of college football and it's funny, uh, Curtis Lofton that mentioned in kind of his, the press release that, you know, roster construction used to be re- much different between college and NFL, where, you know, NFL draft their players, college, you have to recruit them and get them to agree to come to your school and uh, play for you. But now it once, once things change to where you actually get to give uh, the revenue share, I think it's what, 22 million or whatnot. Yeah, it, it's going to take a lot of, understanding how the salary should be paid out, who should be paid the most, the type of players should be paid. You don't want to just, you know, blow all your money on one bet, right? You don't want to put everything on red or, or everything on black or even on green, like in roulette and then lose every dime after mm-hmm. one bet. You've got to be strategic about it. And so bringing in someone that understands the, the strategy around building a roster, leveraging the salary cap, smart move by the Sooners. It just shows how they're always trying to be ahead of the curve. Well, and so Jake Rosenberg, a former VP for the Philadelphia Eagles, connecting with Curtis Lofton and the Oklahoma Sooners athletic department and Joe Castiglione to try and again, get ahead of the game, understanding, okay, how do we build a roster at the collegiate level? And there's going to be a lot of similarities. You, you, you look at the NFL and there's this discussion of positional value, right? Well, in the NFL, you have the money five positions. That's the guy that throws the ball, the guy that catches the ball from the guy that throws the ball, the guy that blocks for the guy that throws the ball, the guy that covers the guy that catches the ball from the guy that throws the ball, and the guy that rushes to go sack the guy that throws the ball. That's your money five, your quarterback, your wide receiver, left tackle, and right tackle to an extent, your edge rusher, not just a defensive end, but a guy that can actually rush the passer, and your cornerback. Those are the money five positions in the NFL. Now, There will be some similarities at the collegiate game, but what we've already seen at the collegiate level is there's a greater emphasis placed on elite defensive tackle play. That's the one. Now, you do get that with guys like Aaron Donald, a Fletcher Cox, a Gerald McCoy at his prime. You did get some of that, but it didn't get elevated to the guys that weren't the elite of the elite at the defensive tackle position. You know, the guys that were kind of that second, third tier, they didn't quite get the the positional value bump like you might see a second tier defensive end get a positional value bump because the elite guys are are so good you're trying to just find somebody that can try to create some productivity as a pass rusher you you see it in the quarterback market you see it in the wide receiver market i mean cd lamb that dude might make 30 million a year in an average annual value on his next contract It, it might be more than that it might push 35 million a year but that's because the wide receiver position has become so valuable and finding that number one wide receiver wide receiver has become so valuable at the NFL level because one, they have that longevity and generally production stays pretty similar for those elite guys at the collegiate level. It might be a little bit different because as we're seeing with the Oklahoma Sooners and their wide receiver depth chart, they've got a lot of options at wide receiver and generally at the college level, you can kind of figure it out if you don't have a legit stud number one wide receiver. If you've got a bunch of guys that are really good number twos, 
you can still be a very, very productive offense. So it's going to be really, really fascinating to see how this evolves and how positional value gets looked at at the collegiate game compared to the to the NFL. Yeah, and I like the point you made around the five money positions, and especially in the NFL and in college, we're seeing, like you said, we're close to that. But what I've noticed most is that it's been the quarterback, of course, is number one. No matter what, college, peewee league, quarterback's most important position, right? right? They touch the ball the most outside of the center. But you're seeing that heavy shift, like you said, defensive line, not only defensive line, those tackles, but edges. They're looking for the next Will Anderson as well, right? You're starting to see that, that, you know, that James Pierce Jr. out there at Tennessee, he's being toted as the next one like that, that plays that jack position where they can kind of move around. But just the entire defensive line, so – your, it's your quarterback, the line that protects them, and it seems to be all five positions have become a commodity at the collegiate level, and then the dude's going after the quarterback. So if you've got those three, you typically are going to be successful at the collegiate level a lot more than you would be at the NFL because NFL is, of course, the top 1%, so there's going to be some other components that's required. But at college, the, the, the talent discrepancy is so wide for the most part even team to team, even within the SEC, there's a massive gap between talent from the top teams and the bottom teams, and even from the top and the middle sometimes. Focusing on how to spend it properly to get the right ones that fit, because that's the other thing too. Everyone believes you should go spend and get every single five how you possibly can. We've learned that that's not how things work. We learned that at Texas A&M over the last like four years that they've gotten a ton of five stars and even since they've transferred, they haven't been really good, right? That tells you those are probably the five stars that are potentially your bust. They exist in there. It's probably a 50% ratio there, but half of your 32, which is 16, probably ain't going to pan out. You got to find those players that fit what you're trying to do. And so I see that that's kind of where they're trying to figure out their roster construction because the NFL do the same thing, right? Your, your execs. They focus on guys that fit them. And so, and as you mentioned about wide receiver with C.D. Lamb, yeah, the NFL also recognized that even though wide receivers are almost as replaceable as running backs, that number one receiver is still critical. That number one receiver is the one dude that keeps everybody else, you know, getting fed because you have to focus on them. And so their numbers are going to probably stay the same. They're still going to get 100 catches, 1,000 plus yards, almost 2,000 yards and double-digit touchdowns, but you still got to double and triple team them, and it makes it to where everybody else can do their thing. And like in college, it's whoever's the emerging hot hand at the time, you got to feed that. And so going into this new era of college football civilization, the focus is going to be on constant evolution. And we see Oklahoma doing that. That's the thing that I pride myself on what BV setting up. Buddy of mine shot me a message and was talking about, I think he saw it on the Orange Bloods uh, message board. It's kind of floating around that they're in shock that Oklahoma did this before Texas did. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> That's kind of what we do, right? <laughs> yeah, Joe Castiglione, he, he's playing chess out there. You know, when everybody in the early days of NIL was just out there and getting those collectives going and spending money and, and getting ahead, trying to get ahead of the NIL game, Joe Castiglione was kind of sitting in the background, watching the landscape develop, watching it evolve, figuring out how it's all going to work and how it's going to work legally. And then Oklahoma was able to strike. Once they had a a comfort level with what NIL was going to be, that's when you saw the big wins come through for the Sooners, and you're going to continue to see that. I I really enjoy the idea that that they're talking to the Philadelphia Eagles because that's been one of those teams in the last decade plus that has tried to go do, let's go have a big off-season spending spree. Let's bring in all these high-priced free agents. Let's create the dream team. You can Google Philadelphia Eagles dream team and see how that worked out. And understand, like, that's not going to be a a long-term plan for success. You've got to... It's not viable. No, yeah. you cannot just go out and spend, spend, spend to get, your, to get what you want. You've got to have, like Jay talked about, culture, fit. All that stuff has to matter. Are you going to spend? Yeah, you're going to spend. But you're going to spend it on the guys that you think are going to fit, not just the guys that you think might be the best, best player. If you've got – who's the dude from uh, draft day, Uh, the quarterback from draft day? I can't remember. Bo Callahan. Bo Callahan. Callahan, He might be the best quarterback in the draft, 
He might be the five-star quarterback in the in the recruiting cycle, but if he's not going to be a fit for your program or your culture, you're not going to be throwing bones at him. You're going to lay back and maybe go look for somebody else that might be a good fit. So again, this is going to be a very, very fascinating aspect. Covering the Dallas Cowboys, covering the NFL, salary cap stuff, man, that was right in my wheelhouse. Absolutely love that stuff. It's it's a puzzle. It's a fun little puzzle to work through, and it's going to be really, really fascinating to see how this evolves in the collegiate game. We got a big time schedule and a lot of big time matchups on the 2024 schedule for the Oklahoma Sooners. But which one of those might we consider toss ups? Let's discuss next coming up here on Locked On Sooners. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available for U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And again, shout out to all the everydayers that are with us here on Locked On Sooners every single day. For your second listen, go check out Locked On SEC with our man Chris Gordy. He'll be down there at SEC Media Days like Jay will be, just getting the lay of the landscape, figuring out what's going to happen here and all the, the talking season talk from all the coaches and players. It's going to be a fun, fun week next week. So go check out Locked On Sooners for your first listen and for your second listen, Locked On SEC with Chris Gordy. Toss-up games for 2024. We'll go through Mike Bratton of that SEC podcast list here in just a second. But, Jay, of the 12 games that are on, are on Oklahoma's schedule, which ones might you identify as toss-up games? So I like to try to be realistic when I come to my predictions, right? Uh, if those of you follow me over at Unfair Sports, you know that I'm – of the few Texas fans that actually watch me on a regular basis say that they like that I'm a football purist, right? I try to be as realistic with a lot of it. And to be honest, I see three games that feel like there really are toss-ups that if Oklahoma does what they're supposed to do, if they go out there and execute on all cylinders, they'll win this game. They'll win these games, right? So I have three of them. I have Texas as one because it's a rivalry that game. Is. We were... We were undefeated on a season only losing one or two games and they were losing eight games in the season and we lose to them, right? That happens. It's what the rivalry is. It's supposed to be that way. You're supposed to feel like it's always a dangerous game regardless of how good or bad said rival is. So Texas is always number one on that list. I feel like the Alabama game is going to be a toss up. I say that because it's the home finale. Alabama coming to us. Kalen DeBoer at that time will probably be have added and we'll understand who he is and what his team's going to look at, like at that point. They should have some cohesion, so it's going to be a challenge. The last one's going to be LSU, traveling to Death Valley to wrap up the season. It's a good chance. It could be playoff implications if Oklahoma executes and LSU executes as they're supposed to. So that one's going to have a lot of pressure on it. Those are the three games I feel like really are toss-up games that I'm not a, I have concerns about, but I have questions about. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go with some of, with a couple of the road games that I think could be toss-ups, and that's at Auburn and at Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss is going to go into the season as a top-10 team, a playoff mm -hmm. contender, one of the teams in college football that's going to benefit the most from the expanded playoff because now they don't have to get by Georgia and Bama to get to the playoff. Mm -hmm. they, they still have access. Uh, and that road trip to, to Jordan Hurst Stadium, man, that is going to be a very challenging environment one that you might not have ever seen in a regular season game. So True. it's it's going to be a, a very interesting dynamic for Oklahoma, that second SEC game coming off of the emotional 
you know, week with Tennessee, that first SEC conference game, and then you got to get ready and get back up and go on the road. And that's where, where we're going to find out, is this team ready for the grind? Are they ready to go week to week to these difficult places and, and play these challenging teams? So I agree with your list, but yeah, those are two that I'd probably throw on the on the uh, the toss up heap as well. But let's take a look at Mike Bratton from hmm. that SEC podcast. He had of Oklahoma's twelve games, seven of them as toss ups. The ones that weren't toss ups were not these ones. He believes Oklahoma will win. Temple, Houston, Tulane. I think everybody's in agreement there. South Carolina, Maine, of course. So those are your five games that they believe will not be toss-ups. Then you're looking at home against Tennessee, at Auburn, against Texas, at Ole Miss, at Missouri, against Alabama at home, and then at LSU. So seven games on the schedule that could be coin flips. And listen, I, I don't necessarily disagree because those are going to be really difficult games for a, a variety of reasons. I know we want to easily dump on Mizzou and Oklahoma should beat Missouri, but Brady Cook is really good. Luther Burden is really good. Theo Weiss, when he is at his best, can be really, really good. So that Mizzou team isn't to be slept on. They can put up some points in a hurry if you're not careful. And as we saw with Rashad Owens from Oklahoma State, a big, strong, physical receiver could give Oklahoma some fits. And so nope. those those seven games being toss ups, I think you can look at each one of those and be like, I, I mean, I could see it. It's a fair point. Like, and and seeing what Mike said, this is the one thing I give the SEC Mike on this is he said, I don't see a game that the Sooners can't win, right. Right. which to me is a very it's a good first step, right? It's a good first step in the respect aspect of recognizing that no Oklahoma is not a doormat. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna challenge everybody, and so. Him stating that there's not a game on there that, that we can't win tells me there's an opportunity to, you know, there's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity for Oklahoma to be successful throughout the year. And so I, I did think it was funny that all of the games, except for the one where everyone considers the coach really on a hot seat, is the they made his toss up. So every single SEC game is a toss up. So it's not yeah. that we can't win them, it's also an opportunity we possibly could lose them as well. I would have eliminated that down. I mean, I would have probably gone down to five and added the two games you mentioned at Auburn just because it's on the road, even though I don't think Auburn's there yet. I need them. They're, they're going to probably need another year with uh, Hugh Freeze cleaning things up. Um, and Ole Miss on the road, of course, is going to be a challenge because it's Ole Miss. They're, they, I, I don't trust Lane Kiffin. I still don't. But at the same time, he still has those moments where, you know, things happen. But – I don't see a loss to Tennessee. I don't see us losing to Missouri. I feel like we probably could toss Auburn in there. I'm, I'm that I, it's a toss up, but I don't think Tennessee or Missouri is going to be too much of an issue right now for us, even with how good their offensive players are. They had a lot of, you know, change on the defensive side. And yes, they did pick up their running back from what Georgia State. Still got to see what he can do there in their system. They would have got like a Dylan Edwards. Then I probably would have been like, okay, I'm a little terrified, but. They didn't do that, but we'll see what, what happens from there. But yeah, no, I like the fact that he does believe that there's not a single game that we can't win. And, you know, I, I'm an optimist and sometimes I drink the Kool-Aid. It's, it's a hot summer day in Oklahoma. You need something refreshing. You grab your crimson pitcher with the Kool-Aid man on the glass and you drink it sometimes. And I, I, I don't disagree. I, I sit there and I look at this, this schedule and yes, it's tough. But I just believe in the talent that Oklahoma's acquired and built on their depth chart. Does that mean that they're going to go undefeated? Probably not. Could they win 10 games? Absolutely. 10 games is well within the realm of possibilities for the team. Could they fall to seven and five? Yep. Possibly. The, the, the range of possibilities for Oklahoma's 2024 season is broad. Yeah. And we'll, yeah. And we'll, there's so much more to break down about the schedule as we get closer to the 2024 season. And, and I'll let you add another thought on this after we break here in a second, Jay, before we talk about Greg McElroy's top 25 for 2024, <laughs> uh, because I do want to hear one last word from you on this, but I, I think 
there's just so many ways that this can go. This whole season can go. And that's why I loved your point the other day that was like, let's just have some fun. <laughs> Nobody knows what the outcome is going to be, but we know it's going to be fun. So we're going to get Jay's final thought on uh, the toss up games before we talk about Greg McElroy's top 25 coming up next here on Locked On Sooners. Y'all know I love sports. I love them so much. I don't ever want them to stop. Hence why I'm doing this podcast around college sports. But unfortunately, as the playoffs wind down, sports ain't sport no more. And we got to figure out something else to do. But the good thing is FanDuel has let, found a way for us to keep the sports going wherever I want them to. So all you have to do is open up the app, dream up any best you want in whatever I'm in the mood for. Like right now, we've got the Texas Rangers who looks like they are favorites going up against the uh, Houston Astros tomorrow. May have to put a little money on that. So I'm going to grab the FanDuel app. Definitely check it out. And the best part about it is, is FanDuel is hooking up all of our customers with a boost or a bonus daily. Yep, that's right. You're getting a daily boost or a bonus. So there's something for everybody every day all summer long. So make sure you go head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So, Jay, give me one final thought just on the tossed up games there. I, I felt like you had something more for me to say or to, to say to me about it. Let's let's hear it. So if there's anything, as we talked about, got to have fun and enjoy this, right? Do not be surprised if this defense goes out there and quiets just about everybody in every single game. It feels like they care so much much about proving Brent Venables right that all those toss-ups are going to be for real toss-ups. I expect them to try to blow out a, a certain set of teams. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so Greg McElroy of SEC Network, also the Kubelik and McElroy show, uh, Alabama quarterback fame, former South Lake Carroll Dragon, who I got to witness play a uh, quarterback, uh, came out with his top 25 for the 2024 season. And the Oklahoma Sooners come in at number 17, uh, right around Oklahoma. I'm not going to go through you know, one through 16, but uh, just in front of them at number 14, the Clemson Tigers, number 15, LSU, and the Oklahoma State Cowboys at number 16. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on where Oklahoma lands in McElroy's top 25? Um, you know what? I think it's fair. I think it's fair that we'll maintain ourselves in the in the 17 to 20 range. We'll probably start every single poll around there. Everyone wants to see what our quarterback looks like. Like, buddy of mine said this, uh, Ty Hayes over at Around the Table Sports, he made mention of this, that um, we don't really see concerns with Oklahoma. We have questions. And those questions just have to be answered at some point. Now, we don't have fear of the offensive line because we know we got Bill Beatonbow and he always finds a way to put it together. But we have questions. We don't know who's going to start yet. We don't know who's the one's going to step up, but we know they'll figure it out. So we're not concerned about it. Same thing with quarterback. I have questions about Jackson Arnold around, will he not be cavalierish and do things that will put himself in harm's way? And that's because I know that he has that mentality of take trying to take over a game. I just don't want him... I've comped him to Drake May when Drake May was a red shirt uh, freshman. That's what it feels like he can be. But Drake May liked to run people over, and that got him in such some trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so I just don't want Jackson Arnold to do the same. I don't want him to feel like he has to carry the team, which is why I'm so bullish on the defense, because I think the defense carries us. And so everybody's going to put us in this range. The only time I would feel disrespected is if we are under the number 20. If we're under the number 20, then at, at that point, you're trolling. There's no reason why you would think we shouldn't be in the top 20, 19 and up. If you put us under 20, you're trolling. So most of the polls are going to say this. I'm fine with a 17, a 16, of 18. Just as long as we're not under 20, then I'll take you seriously. Yeah, I feel like that's a fair place for them to land. They, they've got a lot to prove. You know, I would like to think that People think Texas has a lot to prove, but that just doesn't seem to be the case. Everybody's just kind of banking on Texas 
you know, being really, really good in this one, the, the Longhorns were at number four behind Ohio State, Georgia, and Oregon. I mean, okay, fine, fine. Texas has nothing to prove. They're going to go win the SEC. It's right. impossible for them to lose a game this season. They'll probably beat Georgia at home. That, that's where we're at. That's where we're at <laughs> at, at this point in the offseason. But Oklahoma, you've got a lot to prove. And listen, I think they're okay with that. I think that Brent Venables and his team, they don't care one about the rankings before the Locked On Sooner listener, the everydayer, gets on here and says the rankings don't matter. Yes, I know the team doesn't care about the rankings. They don't care about it. If anything, they'll use it as fuel to go prove people wrong, if they're even looking at it. Probably not even looking at it or addressing it. But I think they don't mind being in this underdog, overlooked, undervalued position because – it allows them to just go prove it, to go do the work and prove it on the football field. They don't need anybody talking for them. They don't need Jay. They don't need John talking about how great they are. They're going to go out there and they're going to show it. And I'm with you that I really do think the defense is going to be what stands out this year as if we're going to look for one reason why the Oklahoma Sooners were so successful. Yes, the quarterback will be good. The run game will be good. But it will be because the defense takes that step into a top 15 defense in the nation. And they are helping to take a lot of the pressure, a lot of the load off of Jackson Arnold. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I honestly, I would be cool if they were even 20, 21, 22, because again, lost a lot along the offensive line, a new starter at quarterback. It wouldn't surprise me if somewhere in one of these polls, whether it's the USA Today coaches or the AP top 25, if Oklahoma is sitting 20 to 25. It wouldn't surprise me. I can see that. I, I think, and and once SEC media days ends next week, you have the the all the media there that'll vote and put in their polls and everything. And yeah, you you know you're gonna have a lot of uh yeah, interesting takes in regards to that. But I guess the question I have, we're going to address this on another episode. Is is we got to talk about the the Jackson Arnold floor and ceiling in comparison to you know former Sooners, right? We got we've got to pick that out because I have a couple of ideas and um, it's kind of terrifying while at the same time it could be really exciting too so but on this I mean the other thing that that and it's only reason why I say 20 is my number is because I get why they would keep us lower because the schedule right there's still so many concerns and I was talking to someone not too long ago uh, on a live and they asked the question like man Sooner fans y'all are y'all don't even care about the schedule no concerns y'all just think it's going to be fine and I'm like yeah because the best thing about our schedule is a lot of our bye weeks we have three bye weeks this season and they're strategically set right you get your bye week before Texas you got bye week before Missouri and you got Maine which is technically a bye week before Alabama right so those bye weeks being as strategic as they are that helps right that helps with getting your mind and body right just the fact that this season was the one that gave us the two bye weeks, man, that's what got me kind of like, okay, I can coast on this. This is not what I cannot lose my mind. We, the bye weeks are going to be there to help with as buffers. And so I anticipate this area. I just like to say anything below 20 tells me you're trolling. Come on now. You know, <laughs> Oklahoma's we've been, we've been top 10 recruiting class every year since Venable's been here and just about all the time we are. You know the players are there. He's got to execute. You know the players. And and there's a lot of trolls out there, right? There's a lot of people out there that want to get that Oklahoma Sooners engagement. I've had to start muting some folks because it's real obvious what they're trying to do. And so I'm trying not to get those interactions. But yeah, I think you know, you look at what and how the schedule lays out. Probably after Texas, I mean, your toughest games are in the back half of the season. Ole Miss. Missouri, Bama, LSU, all in the second half of the season. By that point, you probably have some things figured out. And if you haven't figured it out yet, make sure you listen to Locked On Sooners every (laughs) single day. We are your local experts covering the top stories and giving you the best analysis for Oklahoma Sooners football and all the other athletics as well. Follow Jay on Twitter at Unfair Sports, myself at John9Williams. And after this, go check out the Locked On Sports Today 
24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on the Amazon fire TV in the free fire TV channels app. locked on sports today is here for you. 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today. Now available on the free fire TV channels app again, locked on your source for Oklahoma athletics every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Again, free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. And you can follow the show on all the socials. But until next time, he's Jay. I'm John. We'll talk to you from getting ready for SEC Media Days. Boomer. Sooner.